Ideal Protein is a doctor-designed, coach-led, ketogenic weight loss protocol that uses food as medicine to empower you to lose weight and live your healthiest life. And welcome back for part two of the McHugh David and Buddy Minchie show. <laughs> my, my name is McHugh David, publisher and editor of the news. And we appreciate you guys joining us today. This is part two of a, a two podcast broadcast, I guess you could say, that uh, Representative Buddy Mincy and I are doing. This one is about a drainage summit that he recently held in the Denham Springs area. Uh, so I'm going to let him introduce himself. Good morning again, sir. How are you? Uh, good morning, McHugh. And uh, this is uh, Buddy Mincy Jr. I'm a representative district District 71, House Representative, and I represent the Denham Springs and Walker area. And it's always a pleasure to visit with you. Well, and it, I appreciate you taking the time. So recently, and by recently, it was uh, a week ago today, actually, uh, you held a drainage summit, uh, which included quite a few players from the Livingston Parish area, um, but also a, some state level and federal players as well. And of course, state level being yourself. So, uh, the, you know, first question we really want to start off with to build a base is what 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 gave you the idea? Like, when, you know, were you sitting around maybe... As we talked about in the last podcast, you kind of like to build consensus. You like to talk to people. Uh, so what kind of gave you the idea, and, and, and how, did it, how did it form into this actual summit? Yeah, you know, so flooding in our parish, if you've been here long enough, flooding is personal for you. And, um, you know, I, I live south of Dental Springs. I live, I don't know, a mile or so as the crow flies from, from the Amit River. But it's real low in my area, around my, my area. Um, I have dealt with floods all my life. Ever since I can remember, I have helped sandbag. I have stayed all night and run water pumps. I have uh, re repaired houses afterwards. I've moved people's livestock around when floods were coming. I've, I've, I, every time water comes up in the Amit River uh, significantly, I got people that I contact and I help. I always have. And it's one of those things that, that I, I thought I had a pretty good concept of what flooding was. And I can tell you, I had no idea till water seeped into my house in 2016. So, um, you know, it's personal for me. Um, you know, protecting our, our, our area is personal. And, um, you know, I've been, I've been, you know, fortunate on the flooding end uh, or, the, or the, the drainage district end. I've been really involved with our drainage district. My dad was a parish councilman for 16 years. Uh, I was junior, and I used to get half of his phone calls. And, and people would call me about drainage districts all the time, uh, drainage issues. And uh, even as a school board guy, you know, I dealt with the drainage districts firsthand on, on different issues that we had. So I've had a lot of experience with, with drainage in our parish. And, you know, one thing that I observed was, you know, we've got some good things going on. Uh, we've got different groups that are doing some really good things. Um, but then when you start talking to them, a lot of them don't know what the other ones are doing. Uh, there's projects going on that nobody really has a status update on them. Uh, there's some really good innovation that's going on in some of our, our, our districts that, that everyone needs to know about. So, you know, although we have some really good cooperations between those entities, um, I feel like there's a little bit of a disconnect. And, and I thought it was a great opportunity to come in and have an educational summit. We came in uh, just to learn about what everybody is doing themselves from a drainage standpoint. So the city of Denham Springs was there, city of Walker was there, uh, drainage districts one, two, and five were there, Paris Council was there. Uh, we uh, had a representative from the Louisiana Watershed Initiative uh, to help us. And of course, Congressman Garrett Graves and some of his staff showed up. So, you know, I tried to bring as many people together as we could and, um, and just learn, you know, what are you doing? What's, what's, what's your limitation? What's working well? What's not working well? Where do you need help at? Um, and I think it's also important to know the funding sources and how big an area you are, what's your staff look like. And um, so that was the intention. There was no business conducted. It was nothing but an educational standpoint. And um, we probably had over 50 or so that was there at one time, and it lasted th three hours. And to my surprise, probably 95% stayed throughout the whole thing. So it was a, it was a phenomenal event from my perspective. It, it accomplished what I wanted. I'm going to go ahead and indict myself and say that I wasn't quite able to stay till the end because I did have to go pick up my son from school. So, <laughs> but I did appreciate the invite and uh, it was interesting to see uh, that group come together. Uh, we're going to talk about the individual presenters in a second. Wanted to ask why the STEM Center, which is, you know, the, the Science and Tech Center, 
here in Denham Springs. It's at the old Denham Springs, uh, well, actually, Southside, Southside Elementary location. Uh, you gave kind of a little story about what had happened there. So tell us why you chose the STEM Center. Again, you know, the location, first of all, the STEM Center has been converted and they have a phenomenal facilities that there to, to allow people to come in and have events like this. Uh, but, you know, the biggest thing for me, is, again, uh, it's, it's a, it, was, it was personal. Um, the, the STEM Center, former Southside Elementary, has a story to tell. And, uh, and it really parallels our story on the flood of 2016. And just to kind of give you a little bit of history, we had, um, in 2016, we had just finished the renovations on a four classroom, some labs, bathrooms, and a new cafeteria at Southside Elementary. It was a $1.7 million investment, and I was extremely proud of it. We had put a lot of money into that campus. We built a multi-purpose building, you know, years before that and, and went through and completely renovated the campus. And um, very proud of it. And we, we, we used the facility, the new facility, for a week before it flooded. And although it was raised, you know, at least four feet above, you know, higher than the existing campus, it still took on six inches of water. So, you know, like, like everybody, 90% of our parish, you know, we were devastated by that, that flood. And, um, you know, it was such, I'm, I, you won't find anyone who's more proud of where I'm from or the community that I live in. I'm very proud of Livingston Parish. And I was very proud of our school system. And it was just tore my heart apart what happened. So, you know, what do you do? You know, we have to rebuild. We have to recover. And, um, and we did that there. And that STEM center, you know, we tore down the old campus. Um, Superintendent Wenzel decided to make it into a STEM center. I recommended that to the dumb board members at the time. And we've made it into a STEM center that's really flourishing there. And it really kind of coincides with what we had with flooding. You know, um, you know, we, we had a, a devastating event. And, you know, what do we do from there? Where do we go from there? And uh, we've got nothing but opportunities in front of us. And, but we have to work together. We have to be pulling in the same direction. And that's really kind of the whole, the whole idea of the STEM Center. Um, and, you know, I thought it was just very appropriate for us to be in a new facility that, has, that is that's, that's pro progressing and flourishing. But it actually, you know, it was, it was devastated in 2016 like the rest of us. Sure. And, you know, what's interesting about that as well as Southside Elementary is now going to be sharing a campus with Southside Junior High once that is completed. But very interesting design there, uh, kind of uh, very cognizant of the flood. Uh, there's going to, it's going to be up. And, it, you know, if you've ever seen some of these schools, maybe in, uh, a little farther south in Louisiana, y'all drew some inspiration from that, did you not? We, we actually, in the design, we, you know, we put a lot of energy. Again, we traveled all around and looked at, we looked at flooded campuses. We looked at elevated campuses. FEMA didn't give us a choice, but we, I mean, we knew we had to elevate it anyway. That campus has flooded in the past. It flooded in 83. Um, and so we, we, uh, we knew we had to go up and, and it's going to be the combining of those two campuses is going to be tremendous for the South side community. And, uh, it's going to be a beautiful building and, um, I'm, I look forward to it. So multiple presentations during the summit, uh, you started off, uh, you showed a video, uh, which kind of brought together your thoughts on the flood, you know, pulling together, pulling forward. Uh, we're going to have a new Denim Elementary not too far from the building where you and I sit now. We're going to have that new mega campus for Southside Junior High and Elementary. Um, of course, wetlands and stuff kind of push that off. But the first presenter after you was the Louisiana Watershed in Initiative. Um, at, at multi or just over a billion dollar community development block grant, which is being dealt, donated, not donated, sort of pushed out in, in, in waves every other year. Um, it was interesting to kind of see the interaction between that representative and the room. Uh, what did you feel like you learned from from him? You know, you know, I, we brought them in. You know, we we you know, in addition to the drainage districts, the three drainage districts that were there, we also had the the drainage committee that the parish just recently you know formulated to look at some of our underserved areas that don't have drainage districts. And um, there's grant opportunities. There's tremendous grant opportunities. Drainage District 1 has done a phenomenal job of applying for grants. And, um, you know, this is our opportunity to put some funding in here where we, we don't have that funding. And, um, you know, my main intent with having the Louisiana Watershed Initiative representative there was to kind of give everyone an overview of what and kind of outline what that process is. 
And um, I thought they did a good job of it. You know, there's you could probably spend eight hours, you know, discussing all that. Sure. Um, but you know, I, I wanted to let let everyone who hasn't been dealing with it uh, firsthand to know that it exists. And um, and so that's why we had them there. And next came Congressman Garrett Graves, who you know always has some passionate things to say. Uh, but a couple of interesting things that he brought up. Uh, and, and, you know, you hear it from guys at his level all the time because, again, that's his function, uh, is big picture, big picture, big picture. That's kind of where LWI is as well. You know, they're, they're looking for communities to band together. Uh, you know, your summit came to just that morning they had announced that uh, Parish President Leighton Ricks was dropping the lawsuit against Ascension mm-hmm. uh, for the Laurel Ridge levy and that they'd be working together from here on out. Um Maybe because of LWI and what they were asking of communities, I'm not sure. But uh, what was interesting from Congressman Ga- Graves's point of view uh, was, again, he was touting the Comet River Diversion Canal, which not uh, as helpful here, uh, not as helpful as it will be for East Baton Rouge Parish. But, uh, you know, another thing that came up, which is something you and I have heard about for decades, was the Darlington Reservoir. Uh, you know, were were you kind of surprised with some of the things that he had to say about that? Mainly that it is up over a billion dollars now in cost, and that it would be dry, so the folks in Saint Helena aren't real hip on it. So actually, uh, you know, as I'm on the Comet Diversion um, Task Force, you know, I, I've I've you know I kind of up to speed on where we're, we we are on those projects. You know, the Comet Diversion, um, I, I guess, depends on who you what, what numbers you look at. But you three, four, five inches of of um, that it's going to help us out. Um, but we'll take every inch of it. You know, sure. it's it's much needed. You know, there's a lot of homes that barely get flooded, so it's going to be good for our area. The Darlington, of course, you know, dry a dry Darlington reservoir. You know, I've heard as much as four and five feet of relief for Denham Springs area. Um, but you know the the folks up there who have land in that area, they're not they're not necessarily ha- happy about that, and, and don't blame them. So you know there is a wet reservoir uh, consideration. Um, I don't know those figures and what the difference is. You know one of the things that we're doing with the task force or the COVID uh, diversion is uh, you know we're trying to get some of that data. So they're looking at it. You know, um, but I think there's other opportunities as well. You know that the, it's very cost prohibitive at Darlington Reservoir. Um, but, you know, we, we might could do some isolated spots or some detention somewhere, big detention. So I, I think there's opportunities out there. To, and again, we can capitalize on the grant process to, to try to get some of that funding. Right. And, and, and both uh, Chief of Staff for Garrett Graves, Paul Sawyer, and the gentleman from LWI discussed that we, we have multiple studies going on on the Amy River Basin, uh, which is, you know, interesting. It's going to be interesting to see how they collaborate in the future. So after that came the uh, two municipalities, uh, of course, Jonathan J.T. Taylor from Livingston was there, but they don't necessarily have the uh, drainage issues that town of city of Walker and city of Denham do. Uh, Mayor uh, Gerard Landry from city of Denham, I had a podcast with him last week. He talked a, a lot about his seven and a half square miles, right? That's how he likes to define it. And Jamie Etheridge, chief of staff in Walker, talked about their their city as well. Uh, both are kind of facing uh, some small scale drainage issues. Uh, of course, Jamie Etheridge and Walker facing an unfunded district just south and wanted to say uh, the parish council has introduced measures to formally ratify that committee and undo Gravity's Drainage District 6 and 7, which are both the unfunded districts on the mm-hmm. eastern side of the parish. So wanted to uh, hear your thoughts on on those two presentations from the, from both cities. So, you know, before I get there, let me just say one thing about Congressman Graves is that, that I failed to mention. You know, every time we've reached out to Congressman Graves, he has responded and helped us. Um, he's been he's been a tremendous advocate for Livingston Parish. You know, he helped us with the flood. You know, he helped he helped he wor- I worked with him on getting ROTC at Denham Springs High School. Um, you know, he he has always you know advocated well for us, and and uh, we were very thankful that he was there. Uh, you know, the Walker Mayor was there as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, mayor Watson was there. Uh, I had actually, uh, I personally invited all the mayors throughout the parish, um, but you know, ironically, we had a day, deluge of water before that came, and and uh, and although we had a very good attendance, um, I, I'm thinking that some of our, our outer outlying districts maybe not a show because of all that water. Um, so it was very fitting where we headed at and and what the weather conditions were. Um, but you know, the the city of, of Walker, you know, they have big concerns with what flows down south from them 
uh, is underrepresented from a, not having a drainage district. So there, there, there are issues there. There's limitations there. And, um, you know, I, I'll, I'll tell you this, that, that we are, you know, the, one of the big things is the barrier, the, the interstate barrier. We talked, you know, in a previous segment about some things that I'm looking at from a solution standpoint. But I think it is a com- incumbent upon us as a community to optimize everything that we have existing. We know we've got a barrier. We've got culverts, some underneath it. Uh, some of them are silting in. We've got drainage tributaries that upstream and downstream that need to have some improvements. So uh, one thing that I'm actively working on right now is uh, to create a, a, a cooperative endeavor agreement with all those entities that were in attendance, the three drainage districts, City of Denham, City of Walker, and the Parish Council. We're, we're working towards um, having a comprehensive approach at, um, at filing for a grant to actually address the upstream and downstream um, tributaries of everything that goes underneath the interstate and through the interstate. So I think it's our, our best opportunity to do it collectively. And if we can look at that as a system, um, you know, we, we are working towards that. That's in process right now. And see, I, so you kind of got a little ahead of me here. Obviously, that's your next steps based on this education summit. As you're looking, you wanted to get these, these different groups in a room, wanted them talking uh, and trying to get them all to come together, sign an endeavor agreement. Uh, because right now, Walker has one with uh, uh, Gravity 5, which is their funded district. And Denham has one with Gravity One, which Absolutely. is their funded district. So you're looking to expand that that concept, I guess you could say. Yes. So you know, and look, those those cooperative endeavor agreements between those entities, they they work very well together. District mm-hmm. One works well with District Two and District Five. I mean, we're all doing our own thing, but whenever it, you know the timing is, we we do work together. And I think this is the perfect time for us to uh, to work together to Im- improve the drainage and, and optimize what we have existing. Um, another thing that we've done is, you know, I'm working with Secretary Wilson with DOTD. Um, I've reached out to him about those, those drainage issues that we have with the culverts and everything. I've asked him to look at that. I've asked him to help us to clean those out. And, um, you know, of course, his response was, well, yeah, we'll do that, but it's going to silt back up because y'all have these issues downstream of it. And we're trying to address that. Sure. So, um, you know, it's I think it's a comprehensive of, um, approach from our parish um, in all regards with drainage. We have to be pulling in the same direction. And uh, specifically with that interstate and what it has caused us, uh, we have to put our best foot forward. So I uh, kind of want to bring something up here. Uh, you know, we here at the news have uh, followed these guys from one, two, and five, gravity one, two, and five a lot. Uh, what's interesting is, when you start getting into a full watershed that they that they manage and protect, it, it, it's it's one thing for them to hire people, you know, especially during the summer, uh, to clean out trees, mow the grass, that kind of thing, to kind of keep those waterways flowing. But when you're looking at new projects or expanded capacity and things like that, it costs money that they don't necessarily have. Uh, so as you mentioned, Gravity One is doing a lot to work with grants. Uh, they brought a lot of that up. Uh, you know, uh, hopefully the gravity two and fives benefit uh, five working very closely with the parish on things like Beaver Creek and that, that sort of thing. I know there's an ex- currently an expansion going on uh, that is a core project uh, and getting the army Corps of engineers to do anything is quite a feat. So congratulations to gravity five. But what's interesting and, and, and I've learned this talking to these guys there is trying to get the message out that, you know, some of these bigger projects require engineering and require grant funding and yeah, a lot of times it's confusing and a lot, you know, but they're working on it, you know, because, uh, uh, for instance, for about a year, we followed uh, Gravity, or I followed Gravity One, reported on a lot of the things that they were doing, and you got a lot of, yeah, that's all great, but is it going to help me or not? Because, you know, it's a lot of engineering. <laughs> it's a lot of engineering, I guess you could say mumbo jumbo. What, what was the sense that you got from, they had a lot of questions for each other before, before I had to leave. What was the sense that you got towards the end of the meeting between one, two, and five, which are the three funded gravity drainage districts? I mean, do you think that they'll be more apt to work together? Because again, you know, two flows into five and one. Uh, one kind of gets to deal with Gray's Creek and the Amy River, uh, and two is in the Watson area. Uh, five is having to deal with Beaver Creek and some other smaller tributaries, but they have to take water from two as well. Uh, so there's kind of, like you said, downstream and upstream issues that they all deal with together. So did you get kind of a feeling that uh, they're going to move forward with a little more interconnectivity? You know, I, I think that 
working together, that, that, that spirit of cooperation already existed. I think we expanded it a little bit. Um, I think it was telling for me, listen to all of them, you know, speak about, you know, the, you know, I, I give every, I give every, uh, the, you know, person going over there to speak an outline of what I thought we should address. And then I gave them the flexibility to do with it what they want. Um, but when you, when you hear the funding sources and the differences, you know, drainage district one has a property tax, a sales tax and an ad valorem. You know, I think drainage district, um, District two has a sales tax, mm -hmm. and, I, and I don't remember what district five. What do they have? District they, five has a district two and five have a sales tax, but they do not have the same property tax that's, that's that correct. one has. Correct. So you know, just just hearing those different funding sources, you know, of course, it's all about money, you know, and what we can do with it, um, and and of course, what your needs are. So you know, the the one thing that took away from me was that uh, that I took away from it was that. You know, regardless of the funding sources, they all have the same problems. They don't have enough funding. Um, they they need more engineering. They need more grants, and um, and we just need to work together. And uh, so that's that that's really what I, I I think I think the spirit of cooperation was there. Um, I think it's gonna I think it's gonna continue to grow. So you said that you're gonna try to move forward with a a, a giant cooperative endeavor agreement between the funded district, uh, the parish, and anybody else that would participate. And especially considering the future of these uh, unfunded districts trying to come together, one of your sort of a uh, pet project that you're working at the legislative level on that we discussed in the previous podcast, you mentioned it briefly, but I kind of want you to expound on it, is the barrier on I-12. Uh, it's something that you're working on. Uh, give us give us sort of a two minute overlay on that one. So, you know, I actually had considered legislation to uh, attempt to try to force um, some type of, of response on that barrier and, you know, make them do something. And um, it's, it's been long enough. And, but when you get down to it, um, we don't know what the solution is. We don't know how to retrofit that barrier and, you know, and maintain the structural integrity that's required from the federal regulations. And, you know, so, you know, one of the things that, I, that I'm working on is putting together either a study resolution or a task force that we're going to try to to come up with that solution. Find, let's find out what it is. Let's find out what we can do. We may find out in the process there's, there's some easier things that we can do than what we thought. We just don't know. So I, I want to, I you know, try to figure out what can be done from a solution standpoint and what it's going to cost and how long it's going to take. And, um, and then we'll see how the lawsuits progress. And, um, but once we figure out a solution, we'll be, try to worry, we'll, we'll be working on our, our implementation some kind of way. Anything you'd like to wrap up with before we head out of here? Um, you know, you know, one thing that that there's a lot of people look. We we need we need drainage services throughout this parish, and um, one thing that I focused on in our educational summit was, you know, I, I didn't want to go down the road of the comprehensive drainage program. That's a conversation the parish council has to have, and, and they'll be bringing that to us, and we'll be making that determination. Um, but in the meantime, we need to, we need to optimize everything we have. Um, working together, um, our, our drainage improvements, ups, our grant resources, I mean, we need to do everything we can um, because, again, uh, this flooding is personal for me, and I know it's become personal for you know, the, the, the rest of our parish because most of us flooded. And um, it's just whatever we can do together. Again, thank you, sir, for taking the time. We appreciate it. Thanks for putting that together and hosting it. I, I know the people of Livingston Parish appreciate that as well because they may not like the engineering stuff, but, you know, they do enjoy when they can see projects getting done, being done, and, and fixing some of the drainage problems. So, again, if you'll introduce yourself here on the outro, we'd appreciate it. Yeah, and and McHugh, let me just let me just mention this one thing, uh, one more thing about our area specifically. You know, the Louisiana watershed they set up eight regions through the state, and um and we're a part of Region Seven. Mm -hmm. And uh, although you know the Amet River uh, Basin is statutory, uh, I think the only drainage basin this this set in statutes uh, in the state. And um you know there's there's some thoughts that we need to not be a part of the bigger Region Seven. Um, and there's also a lot of concerns about the funding. You know, when when this 1.2 billion came in because of of the flood event that we had, um, and then that money is dispersed throughout the state, um, you know, it, it's kind of tough. You know, um, but 
you know, we need to make um, take advantage of everything that we have and optimize it and, and get the, the best out of it. And um, I just hope that I can play my part in, in putting that together. But I, I want to thank you for having me here today. Yes, sir. And, um, and I'm uh, Representative Buddy Mincy, District 71, and um, from Denham Springs and Walker area. Thank you. Yes, sir. And my name is McHugh David, publisher and editor of the news. Appreciate you guys out there joining or watching. Uh, we are on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and YouTube. We are once a week in print on Thursdays at $7 a month to get that in your mailbox. We're also online, www.livingstonparishnews.com. We appreciate you guys joining us. Don't forget about the uh, ongoing campaign we have where we're doing interviews about the uh, millage renewal, which, as you said in the uh, legislative podcast we just did, you're going to be interested to see that outcome. I will as well. And uh, we will be interviewing school board members coming up. And, of course, our last coach was Brett Beard. So please check that out at www.livingstonparishnews.com backslash podcast. And we will see you guys next time.